Good morning. Can you hear me? Good. Oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hey, aren't you excited? There you go. Oh, you're a little bit cold this morning. It's a sunny day. It's a good day. It's a day for the Lord. You know what? Um, let me just start that clock. As I'm sitting there and I'm praying, I always ask, you know, Lord, how do I open my message? Because it's... It's your message, Lord. How do you want me to open it for you? And it's so abundantly clear this morning, it's all about his, his presence. He wants us to invite him in. He wants us to know him better. And oh, what better way than to be in his presence? It is so peaceful, it is so beautiful, and it's so overpowering. So let's do that now. Let's open in prayer. Father, we, we come before you this morning and we thank you. We thank you that we can come here today and just love on you, Lord, as you love us. I ask, Lord, that you will prepare our hearts for this message. That you will empty us of us and fill us with you, with your word. I make it known that I do not lead on my own understanding anything about me, Lord, override it and let it be your words that come from my mouth. I am your vessel, Lord. Have your way here today, Holy Spirit. Create in us hungry hearts, Lord, for we desire to know more about you. And we give you all the honor and all the praise because you are worthy. Amen. Okay, so, yes, the songs that we sang says it all, and the tithing and all offerings that we, we've just heard says it all. It all is all about what you put in, because what you put in, you will get out. The more time you spend in someone's presence, the closer you, you get to them, the, the more intimate the relationship is with that person. And that is why this morning's message, I think, is so appropriate. It is, it's just so beautiful. For the last two weeks, this message has been so on my heart. And um, I want to share it with you. I want to share this morning a shepherd's heart with you. Because he is our shepherd, and he wants to share his heart with us. And we are going to spend some time in John 10 today. So please open your Bibles at John 10 and we're going to work from there and we're going to move around in John. So John 10 from verse 1 to 5 and we're also going to read from the New King James. And the heading in the Word of God says, Jesus is the true shepherd and also known as the good, uh, the good shepherd. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorway opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. We are going to take these verses and we are going to look at it in more depth. I'm going to paint a picture for you and I'm going to invite you to look at that picture with new eyes. Now we know from the word of God that it says that no one can come to the Father except through the Son. And that is, that is powerful, that is beautiful. That means no matter what you do, no matter how good you think you are, it's not going to work. It can only be through the relationship of Jesus Christ. Accepting him into your life. Making him the priority in your life. Now before you've, you do this step, before, before Christ, if I can call it that, you suffer from the syndrome that I call the me, myself, and I syndrome. It's all about me, it's all about what I can do, it's all about where I can benefit and what I can do and get out of this life so that it makes it easy on me. 
But when you meet Christ, when you become a child of Christ, you start living for Him. You start thinking, how can I please my Lord? What can I do to, to please Him? I know I can't do it on myself, on my own strength, but I automatically, you start thinking differently, you start acting differently, and the old ways, don't, you don't even want to be like that anymore. Apostle Peter calls Jesus the shepherd of our souls. Now, isn't that beautiful? That's in 1 Peter 2.25. It says, For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. So, I'm going to take you to the land of Israel. Come on, use your imagination. Let's work that brain this morning. We are now in the land of Israel. Oh, I'm going to go there one day. I can't wait. Okay? So, I'm speaking. So we are now in Israel and we see the shepherd's boy. And we're going to use the shepherd boy in the natural and his sheep. And we're going to use our Lord Jesus Christ and we the sheep. And we're going to bring the two together and we're going to see how perfectly they complement each other. And then we're going to see at the end where it brings us. So as I said, we are now in Israel and here we see the shepherd and we see his flock. But they're not just sheep. They're his babies. They love each other. A shepherd will look after his sheep because he values them. He knows them by their names. He knows them by their quirkiness. He knows them by their moods and everything. He knows everything about them. Okay? Because he spends a lot of time with them. It's not a job. It's not an occupation. It's a calling. It's something that's been passed down from generation to generation. If you look at his father and maybe the son and the son and the son and the son, it's something that they esteem very high. It's, they're proud of what they do. And it's the same with us. Our Lord Jesus knows our name. He calls us by our name. He is our shepherd. He knows our ways. He knows what we think. He knows us personally. He sees us. We know from the Word of God that the shepherds in the Word of God was not just, let's just say, that there were men of high value, of high stature that were shepherds. David was a shepherd boy. Moses was a shepherd boy. Abram, Isaac, Jacob. They were all shepherds. And even Rachel. So if you were women here today and you think, that's eh, not me, I've got news for you. We also there. Yeah. Shepherds are called by the, the voice that the, uh, the shepherd calls his sheep by a certain voice that he makes. And it's, it's quite an, a unique way that he calls his sheep. When he walks, they follow. But as the word of God says, they know my name. They follow me and they won't follow anybody else because they know my name. So as the shepherd walks, he makes this, and I apologize for the sound, he makes like a kick, 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 like a funny noise. And they know, okay, that's my shepherd, I'm going to go there. And another shepherd makes another terrible noise, and that sheep goes there. So the two don't cross paths. So you see, that is what our Lord does. He calls us, he speaks to us, and he calls us by our name. So now, what are the voices that we listen to? We've basically got these three voices. We've got our own voice because that is the one that we think with. We've got the voice of the enemy because he's always there. And then we've got our loving Father's voice. Now our voice is always the one that we, we struggle with, you know. Be, keep quiet now. No, it's not now. Get, go away, you know, I'm busy now. And then there's the voice of the enemy that will always condemn you, that will always put you down, that will always try and tempt you into something that you shouldn't do. You know, that negativity. And that's where your voice or your mind and him, sometimes you too, you maybe indulge a little bit too much or you clash a lot. And then there's the voice of the Father that is uplifting, that will correct you, that will always love you, that will bring you back, that will lovingly embrace you. So that is the voice that we hear. Through the Holy Spirit, we are being led to have an intimate relationship to follow that voice. 
John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So if we are the sheep of the shepherd, they hear, we hear his voice, we follow him. He knows us, therefore we follow him. So we know that we are now basically camping out in Israel, and we know the landscape. Now I don't know if you've ever seen the landscape in Israel. Sometimes it's quite dry, well, most of the time it's quite dry there, and the landscape is normally, you know, hills and valleys and stuff. And when you look at it, there's not always a lot of greenery. And by first glance, you think, what are these sheep eating? Stones? Because I don't see any grass. And that's why the shepherd is so handy, because he's the one that shows the sheep where is the posture. He's the one that shows the sheep where is the well. And he's the, he's the one that shows the sheep where he'll find protection for the night. And because there's a scarcity, he knows exactly which route to follow. Now the food represents God's truth. Jesus taught that the food that the soul lives on is every word that comes from the mouth of God. So you see, the food that we get from our Lord Jesus Christ is in the word of God. It's taking the word of God and eating the word of God. And it says in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it's the living word, the word that you eat. I love this saying, he who, he who finds Jesus finds life. Happy is he who searches the Bible and discovers the Savior. Beautiful, don't you think? Now water. You don't always find a stream of water. You've got to sometimes find it in a well. And these wells are deep. So how's the sheep going to get this? Is it going to go down in the well? He's not going to come back up. That's why the sheep needs to take his little bucky and take it down and bring it up and give the water to the sheep. And as soon as they get to the well, the sheep will surround that well and they'll patiently wait for that shepherd to scoop out the water and give it to them so that they can nourish. Water represents the Holy Spirit. John 7:37 says, He who believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Only Jesus can give you this living water. Only our Lord Jesus. So security and safety. Look, sheep are easy prey. The, the wolves or the jackals there see the sheep as easy prey. They can pick them off quickly. But that's where the shepherd comes in. And it's so interesting because if you look at a jackal or a wolf, they are they're conniving little animals. They are opportunists. They are stalking. They're forever there. They linger around the waiting for the opportunity to grab a sheep. Okay? But if you look at them, you'll see that they are forever, you know, looking for a trail, um, looking for the scent of the sheep. But as soon as that, that, that um, wolf or jackal finds the scent of a human being their heads lift up and they start searching they start looking where is this human being you know why because they're scared of the human beings they are terrified of the human beings because they know this person or this being can hurt me and I can't come near to the sheep because that person's going to be there. This smell that I'm, that I'm smelling, I associate it with danger. And isn't that just perfect? Because when we stay close to our shepherd, who can hurt us? How can the enemy come close to us when we stay close to our shepherd? When we walk in authority that is given to us, when we walk in the power that is given to us, when we, when we speak from that, that authority and that power, how can the enemy come near us? The word of God reminds us the demons know Jesus and they tremble. They know him. So if you come in your own authority, they're going to laugh at you. But when you come in the authority of Jesus Christ, they've got a heal and they've got to run for the hills, just like those jackals. Just like those jackals. 
Psalm 91 reminds us that we dwell in the shelter of the Most High. You will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. King David knew when he wrote Psalm 23, he says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. What, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That represents the shepherd. At night time, those sheep are the most vulnerable. Because remember now, you're now outside, you're in the, the open felt, and there is no other shelter. Okay? So what does the shepherd do? He builds for him a round structure. And normally the structure is either I've seen some bricks that's quite high so that they can't jump over, or they take um, bushes and they dry bushes and they make like an encampment. But it's always, well most of the time, round, but there's no doorway. There's no door. Are we even going to find you're going to walk around with the door on your armpit? No, you become. The shepherd stands there and he stands in front of the doorway and he guards that entrance. The sheep are safe inside and he stands. He sits, he stands or he lays inside by the doorway and anything that wants to come in has got to go through him. And that's what the word of God reminds us. John 10, 9 says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He is the gatekeeper. So what happens to a sheep that wanders off, that goes astray? Psalm 119 verse 176 says, I have strayed like a lost sheep. They wander off. Now there's always that one that wanders off, that goes into his own direction and says, I'm okay. I'm just going to linger here on the one side and do my thing. What happens when you're outside of the will of God? What happens to that sheep when he's not with the shepherd? He's an open, he's an open target. He doesn't know how to fend for himself. He doesn't know how to get down a well. He doesn't know where to find the food. And the jackal, the wolf, is waiting for him. What happens when you step outside of the will of God? What happens when you are not in church, when you need to be in church, when you need to be where you need to be, on your knees, praying, reading your word, and spending time in the word? You start leaning on your own understanding, and you start saying, I can do this on my own. I'm just going to do it on the side. And that's when you get swiped off your feet, because the enemy is going to come for you. Remember? They stalk you. They know exactly where you are and what you are doing. Zechariah 10, 2 verse B says, Therefore the people went their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. When you look at the people went their way, it is they slowly moved away. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's gradually you move away. You know, you gradually just disappear away. You're here today and gone tomorrow. You like quickly, uh, slowly you move away. You don't even realize it. Can this lost soul be saved? Of course, always, always. My daughter's not here today, but I'm going to talk about her. When she was about Matthew's age, about 19, Oh, she's old. Anyway, um, we went down to the beach the one day. I can't remember if it was a Saturday or a Sunday, but she just got a new pair of rollerblades. So she is rollerblading, and we're down at the flea market, the stalikis and everything, and she goes off into the crowd, and I can no longer see her. And my heart starts pounding, and I'm thinking to myself, Lord, where is this child? I can't see my child and I'm panicking and I'm moving faster through the crowd and I just look at every face, no it's not my child, I scan everybody, it's not my child, it's not my child and it is, I must admit, at some point I did say and think if I get this child, oh I'm going to hurt her but anyway, let me just get this child but it, it went quickly, it just disappeared quickly and then all of a sudden we locked eyes, you know what happened? She realized she no longer saw me and she turned back and she came looking for me. 
and our eyes locked and she saw me and I ran to her. I loved her. I never laid a hand on her. I just took her and I embraced her and I kissed her and of course I searched every part of her body to see if there's anything wrong with her and I asked her, where were you? Are you okay? Are you certain you're okay? You know, because you never know. The same with the shepherd and the sheep. The sheep decides it's going to go its own way. It's going to find the little trail and it's going to go off on its own and it, decide, and it realizes, oh boy, I don't see the shepherd, I don't hear his voice, where am I now? And it slowly backtracks and it somehow gets his way. But meanwhile, the shepherd realized, head count, one missing, keep them there and he goes and he searches. He goes and finds that sheep. What does, the sheep, what does the shepherd do? Do you think he takes that sheep and spanks it? Mm -mm. He embraces that sheep. He holds on to that sheep. And he checks that sheep. He gives it a good checking out. Maybe you, you hurt your paw. Is there a bite mark? Is there a trail of blood? Is there anything wrong with you? And then he takes him back. You know that sheep just follows. I'm here, let's go. And he says, no, now you're going to come with me and I'm going to give you the 10 commands and oh, you know, no, no, no. You come with me and we are good. We, we go back. That's our Jesus. That is what he does with us. All you need to do is just turn back. Turn back. Seek his face. Look at him. Ask him, Lord, here I am. I messed up, Lord, I'm here. And he will embrace you. You know the story of the, lost, uh, uh, of the prodigal son? He thought, let me just go back. I will work in the pigsty. I will do the yucky work. I don't care. I just need to be with my father where it's safe, where there's protection and where there's provision. I just want to come home. And what did the, what did the father do? He threw up his arms and he embraced his son. He held a feast for his son. And that is what Jesus does. No matter where you think you are, no matter how far you think you are, no matter what you've done, I've got news for you ain't going to change a thing about Jesus' love. He still loves you. He still wants you back. Luke 19, 10 says, Son of man is come to seek and to save which was lost. He leaves the 99 to find the one. A shepherd is a, shepherd, shepherding is a relationship between many who are weak depending on the one that is strong. John 10, 4 says and when he brings out his sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice the love of god is revealed here the tenderness of god the mercy and grace of power oh where would we be if we didn't have his grace and mercy no? oh you know we would be nowhere this is symbolic to what jesus did for us on the cross he saved us from the pit of hell. He took us from Satan's kingdom and he brings us back to his kingdom for him, to spend eternity with him. Colossians 1 verse 13 to 15. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sin. But it doesn't end there. It gets better. You might think, is there anything better than this? Yes. This is where we come in. This is a task for you and for me. We get to share Jesus with everybody. We can't hold him to ourselves. We can't put him in our pocket and keep him close to us. No, we are disciples. We need to disciple to everybody else. We are to shepherd for one another with Jesus Christ as our good shepherd. We need to share the heart of the good shepherd with everybody. 1 Peter 5, 2 to 4, and I'm reading from the New um, uh, New Living Translation. There you go, that one. <laughs> Care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, nor 
Ach, not for what you can get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. But Lord, ach, don't Lord over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. We get to share, not hold on to. We need to share the good news, not condemn people, not force it down their throats. We need to share and walk in love. You've got the testimony. Your whole life is a testimony. Share it with people. Pastor Chris shared last week so beautifully. So beautifully a testimony of him sharing the word of God and what it's done in that man's life. And I just know great things are coming from that. We, to, we are to be the examples of a good shepherd to each other. We've got to be holy and pure. We can't go with our own motives. No, we've got to go with a heart for God. Ephesians 5, 1 says, we are to imitate Christ and model our lives after him. Imitate him, model him. That means not comparing to one another, not thinking this is what that one does, I've got to mimic that one. No. You know what? One thing I've learned is if you want to compare, compare to Jesus, who you're quickly going to find out, oh, I'm short you fall. <laughs> so forget about everybody else. Just ask God, use me, Lord. The way that I am, my quirky ways, the way that you've created me, use me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Here I am, Lord, that humble heart. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. So all of us have had their veil removed, to see, uh, and removed, can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. We are changed now, last week, as the college closed for a little bit before um, the semester, Teacher Lindy spoke about names in the Blood Covenant. And it, it just reminded me again how powerful a name is. I mean, you call your, your spouse, you call your, okay, not your spouse because you normally give them a nickname, and even your children. But we call each other on our names. That's what we've been supposed to call each other. Sometimes we shorten it, sometimes we change it. I think I'm the only one that gets a longer name from Paula to Pauline. <laughs> but it's okay, that's how we know each other. And in the word of God we know that Jesus called his disciples by their names. Matthew, follow me. He called Peter, follow me. And then the best one, I love this one, he calls Paul but not by his original name. Now, yes, you know what's coming. When you take Saul, because Saul is his name that bef before, okay, that is what he was called, Saul. And when you look at Saul, he is this Roman soldier. I mean, he's the man. He's got everything going for him, and he thinks he's doing the work of God, okay? But when you look at the Hebrew word for Saul, it means to question, to ask a question. And what is Saul actually doing? He's questioning Jesus. Who are you, Jesus? Who are these people talking about, this Jesus? He couldn't understand it because he never met Jesus. So he was questioning everything. And then he goes on a trip. Oh, and don't we all go on our own trips? And then Jesus meets us. And he meets the man himself. And he says, Saul, Saul, he calls out to him. And at that moment, Saul became Paul. And when you look at the Hebrew word for Paul, it means small. It means little. It means humble. And God humbled him. And God took this great man and he brought him down on his knees. And he changed him from Saul to Paul. We need to let go of the souls of our lives and become the poles of our lives. We need to come humble, small, and little in the presence of God. We need to fall down on our faces and say, Lord, here I am. I'm ending. 
I know this has touched you as it touched me because this was just such a revelation. Though we are incomplete, God loves us completely. Though we are imperfect, He loves us perfectly. Though we may feel lost and without a compass, God loves, God's love encompasses completely. He loves every one of us, even those who are flawed, rejected, awkward, sorrowful, or broken. He loves us equally. We are all important to him. He died on the cross for each and every one of us. All you need to do is seek him. As I said, stay small, stay humble, stay hungry before him. And allow him to be the shepherd of your life. I want to ask you to close your eyes. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here today. We thank you, Lord, that you are the good shepherd. No one else, Lord, but you. I pray, Father, that you will touch the hearts. Today, Lord, let it not stop here, but continue to work in us, Lord. Let us come humbly before you, Lord, and lay everything at your feet, Lord. Let us not wander off, and if we have wandered, bring us back, Lord. Bring us safely back. For we cannot stay outside of your protection. We need you, Father. We need every part of you, Lord. You are a shepherd. And we are your sheep, Lord. I ask, Lord, that touch the hearts here today. If there's anyone here today that feels that he or she, if the, this message has touched you in any way, if you feel that you have maybe gone astray and you need to come back, if you feel you want to renew your relationship today, if you feel like you just want to be in His presence today, you want to touch from Him today, I invite you to come forward. Don't stray off. Stay close to Him. Stay close in His protection. Learn to yield, to surrender and to stay small before him. Lord, I thank you for your presence here today. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing right now. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord. Let your angels encamp around us, Lord, and keep us safe. And bring us all safely back next week, Lord. I plead the blood of Christ over each and every one of us here today, Lord. And we honor your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, I'm here in front if you need any prayer.